Hey everybody, it is Rolly, and today is Monday Whispers Chat. So last week we didn't have Monday Whispers Chat because um, we didn't have anyone that had signed up for Monday Whispers Chat with summertime. I'm not um, I'm not sure how things are going to go over the next um, few months, but we do have somebody next week. So and um, so this week, hello, Janine. Um, so this week we have, um, so I decided that I'm actually going to do this today. Um, so I'm going to hop on and, oh, actually <laughs> that wasn't even, I just got a pop-up message from Janine. So she apparently sent me an inbox message and I will get back to her. So if she's catching me live, I will chat with you in a bit, Janine. Um, so anyway, I wanted to be able to still hop on today um, because I wanted to be able to talk about anxiety and that has been a topic that has been um, pretty heavy with a lot of the clients that I've been dealing with lately. And so I thought that it would probably be the most appropriate um, conversation to be able to have. And so um, what I wanted to start off with was, so like in the description, I actually talked about um some of the symptoms of anxiety and anxiety symptoms are different um, for different people and um, usually I have hang on a second I um, I, I normally can see what is going on I just want to see because it doesn't look like I'm actually live so I'm just checking first just checking before I kind of keep going on and oh, I am there I am okay so um so I have three people that are on so say hi because I can't actually see oh there we go yes I can so I'm using the be live still um as opposed to the um the other uh just direct Facebook live so I uh yeah. Okay. So I wanted to be able to talk about anxiety. So like I said, I've had a lot of conversations with people lately about anxiety. A lot of my clients have been struggling with anxiety. Actually, most of my clients that I actually have struggle with anxiety. And so um, it's not a prerequisite to work with me, but it seems to be that that is who it is that tends to, um, to connect with me. So I am outdoors, so hopefully I won't have any big trucks going by today. Um, but I wanted to be able to talk about um, some of the symptoms of anxiety. So the ones that I've actually listed um, are a few, right? So there's um, there's still a long other list of things. And so when you have anxiety combined with depression, then there's some other symptoms and stuff that comes up as well. And so... Um, Anxiety has been something that is natural for me from the time that I have been little. And so um, from a very young age, my mom has shared that anxiety has been something that I have struggled with. And so um, that is, um, so not only have I used, have not only have I dealt with anxiety professionally, but I've also dealt with it personally. And I still do. For the most part, I can manage my anxiety. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I really have to kind of go back and say, okay, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be doing that? Because sometimes my brain will take over. And, but for the most part, for 90% of the time, I can probably say that, um, that anxiety does not rule my life anymore. Um, it did for a long time, but not so much anymore. So, um, so some of the things that I actually posted um, just in the, com in the description is um, fixating on a desired outcome. So that is um, that is one of the symptoms. So one of the things that um, you set an expectation of this is what it is that it's going to be looking like and that there's no changing it. And so when things don't happen the way that you're actually expecting them to actually happen, then um, that sets you off in a panic. And that is one of my big ones. That is one of my biggest challenges of being able to kind of just step back and say, okay, so this is what it is that's going on. This is what it is that's happening. And these are the things that I expect to be done in a certain way. And so I've learned to be able to let go of that a lot. Um, not saying that I've let go of that 
100%. Um, because part of that also has to do with planning. And so I need to be able to plan. I need to be able to like know what it is that's going on. But I am not as attached to the outcome. So that is one of the biggest things. Um, for me is being able to like not be so attached to the actual outcome as to how things are going to be whereas I don't have like this per picture perfect um, expectation of what it is that's happening. So um, another time that anxiety really kicks in for people is um, restlessness. So I had a conversation with somebody today um, during our group coaching call and and we talked about was the um, that how anxiety just kind of takes over and doesn't allow for sleep and that is very common for a lot of people that struggle with anxiety is that an inability to be able to just be relaxed and restful and um, and be able to get some sleep and get uninterrupted sleep so sometimes it has to do with some physical things so like that so making sure that you're actually talking to your doctor about um if there are any physical symptoms any physical reasons why you're not so is there medication that you're taking that is affecting your sleep is there anything that is going on um in um in your physical so like do you have some chronic pain that you're dealing with is there um so like is there something else outside of the anxiety outside of your head that is actually keeping you from, from sleeping. So that is like really, really important as well. Um, another one was lack of concentration. So having difficulty, the inability to be able to um, think through. And um, that is one of my big ones as well, is that when anxiety starts to take over, then things are very easy. I'm very easily distracted. I have difficulty being able to focus on the things that I want to be able to do and being able to um, really capture that moment. So um, so I know that there's a few of you guys on here. So if you have any anxiety symptoms, what kind of things do you experience? What kind of things, um, what are some of your symptoms? So I'd love for you guys to be able to share in that discussion. So um, makes Monday Whispers chat a little bit more um, challenging for me when I don't actually have somebody that I'm interviewing so but still love to be able to have you guys follow as part of the discussion and if you're actually catching the replay then hashtag replay let me know what some of your symptoms are what are some of the things that you experience in terms of your anxiety that um how does it show up for you like how does anxiety show up for you because like I said it's been extremely common and so over the last and this is the reason why I put, picked this topic is that over the last um probably three weeks has been really intense in, in terms of working with people with anxiety. And so I thought that I would actually just kind of globally have this chat. So um, another one of the symptoms are um, difficulty making decisions. So we sometimes um, have all these different things of expectations of what it is that we want to be able to have happen. But then push comes to shove it's like we can't make a decision we can't decide do we want to wear the right red shirt or do we want to wear the blue shirt and I know that I'm kind of minimalizing it a little but for some people that really is like it's that heightened um, intensity for some people is like they can't even figure out what pair of shoes that they want to be able to wear um, and so that is again that difficulty making decisions so not decide not being able to decide okay do I want to do this or do I want to do that and like looking for other people for their approval um, because you really don't have that confidence in yourself in terms of like what decisions to be able to make um, <laughs> I like this one so worrying about worrying right so um, like it's that constant worry that constant and again we're supposed to be able to worry about some things right so but it's to the extreme right so it's always taking that to the extreme of like how do we manage what is it that's going on and um so that's the um and that's one of the other challenges um so hi sue i miss you i'm so glad to see that you're actually on live with me um, so inability to sleep, can't, um, can't wait in line at the grocery stores, impatience with others. Like those are really good ones. Um, and I'm going to apologize if I don't say your name right. Um, Rack, 
um, Rach, or Rach, probably Rach. I'm gonna assume that it's probably Rach. So let me know if it's Rach. Um, so typical physical signs, insomnia, decision-making, organizing. Oh, organizing, that's actually a really good one. I don't have that one on my list. So yeah, that's definitely, um, so needing to have everything um, exactly in order so that nothing is changed and so that you know exactly where things are and what it is that's happening. Um, so that's actually a really good one. Um, physical stress symptoms. So having um, panic attacks, right? So that physical um, tightness in your chest, your heart palpitating. Um, and I actually listed some of the other ones like shortness of breath, insomnia, um, irrational thoughts and fears, but like the physical symptoms are like that. Um, some people actually feel like they're actually having a heart attack. And so that is a really strong indication that you are actually really struggling with anxiety. Shortness of breath. Um, it's like that taking your breath away. And so um, constant fight or flight, um, but with good reason, uh, with an adult daughter with complex mental health needs, absolutely right? So like when we are worried about um, our um, our family members or the people that we are very, very close to. So like definitely when we have someone else that is having some struggles or that is having some anxiety or that is having some mental health issues, definitely um, huge, right? So it's like, I want to be able to escape. I want to be able to be done. And um, and today I had one of those perfect examples. And so it's like, okay, so am I done or am I not done? Like, am I just really frustrated with the situation? Or is it because I am in that fight and flight, like I'm tired of fighting about it and um, that kind of thing. So um, yes, Rochelle, <laughs> Rachel. Um, so my organizational skills went out the door after my head injury, but some of the symptoms seem to overlap. Um, yeah, and actually there's, uh, I think it was three weeks ago, we actually talked about somebody that actually had head injuries and anxiety is definitely one of those symptoms um, that we didn't really talk about, I don't think, but that actually really falls into that, um, um, that head injuries, right? So um, one of the other biggest ones that I wrote down, so insomnia is like lack of sleep, having difficulty sleeping. And both of you guys that are on, so both Sue and uh, and Rach are actually talking about um, the insomnia, right? So like in having a lot of difficulty sleeping and um, <clears throat> irrational thoughts and fears, right? So one of the things that I had a conversation with somebody today was, um, is it really true, right? So asking yourself, is it really true? So I'm afraid that somebody's gonna respond this way. Um, do you have experience with that particular person experience or um, responding that way? Or is it something from the past? Or is it just our own um, irrational expectation as to how somebody else is gonna react, our own fear? And so some of those are um, definitely what it is that's going on. And so, um, so yeah, so it's just those irrational thoughts. Those irrational thoughts are definitely something that actually really, really plays havoc on people's um, minds. So even most people say it's not my hat to wear. The hat sticks around. Boundaries. Oh, boundaries. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering whether or not you were on my call today, right? Um, so, because again, that was one of the other things that we had talked about was being able to set boundaries. So us being able to, um, not sleep because somebody else's, um, our expectation of how we expect somebody else to be handling a situation that we are worried about how, what the outcome is that there's going to have, that they're going to actually have. And I think that that probably fits really well. Hey, Dave. And I think that that fits really well with um, with what it is that you said, Rach, about the um, the challenges with having someone else with their own mental health issues and that you're worried about them. And and, and it is your child. So I don't care how old your daughter is, because uh, I think you said adult. Um, but like, it doesn't matter how old our children are, is that we still worry about them. And I know that I have um, my two boys, and that is one of the things that regardless of how old they are, I still worry about them. Um, I know in having conversations with my mom, like I am 49, like so, um, but my mom still will talk about different things that she actually worries about when it comes to her. So, um, so definitely some of the challenges that we actually have. So 
one of the things that happens with anxiety though is that it actually keeps us from living in the present so helps ex because we're always constantly living in that future self we're living in hello mr spider where did it go i think he's gone um so <laughs> the joys of actually being outside but it's okay i love being outside it is so nice to actually be outside um so being able to have those expectations of like living in the here and the now and so mindfulness is like one of those huge huge um things that have actually helped me with dealing with anxiety and it's not easy and it's not something that it's like just like okay let's just just be in the present right just be now and so um but being mindful being mindful in this present moment and not and it's like okay so like am i doing and there's a <laughs> there's that fine line of like you still need to plan ahead right so you still need to plan ahead but you don't need to live in that ahead and i and that's what the difference is right so like you still need to be able to think about what is some some of the outcomes that you want to be able to have without being fixated on those specific um outcomes exactly how that needs to happen and so um one of the other things too is that um having that struggle with somebody else's anxiety or somebody else's um expectations of what it is that's going on and so like you're always kind of living in that fear of um how are they going to respond what's going to happen um being able to set those boundaries um and being able to live with the expectations and that was one of the things that um that we talked about a little bit is that we can't control what other people are going to do. We can't control how somebody else is going to respond to what it is that, that is going on. We can only respond to how we are responding. And I know that for me, when I get anxious, then I'm losing it, right? So I have to like stop, take a breath, um, think about what it is that what it is that's going on and because then my thoughts just kind of go all over the place and I have difficulty with sometimes being able to like think about what's the next step what's the next step what's the next plan until I can actually take that step back so when I'm able to actually recognize it that's one of the things that is uh, that's really challenging um, one of the other things that is actually um, challenging is um, when somebody else tells us to take a breath Right. So it's OK for us to be able to take a breath and know that we need to take a breath. But when somebody else is telling us we need to take a breath, mm, that doesn't go over so well, or at least it doesn't for me. So that's one of the other. Um, so those are some of the other things. So being able to find ways of living in the present as opposed to living in the future. And so um, so let me know what are some of the things that you guys do to be able to manage anxiety? How do you manage anxiety? when uh, when things are like just really not so great right so how do you stay in this moment how do you stay in the present as opposed to going into the future so <clears throat> one of the other um things which is why i'm really loving this weather um for those of us who are in northeastern ontario it was a very very long and cold um winter and then spring just seemed to like last forever it just didn't seem to want to let up and actually get into that nice warm weather and so now that we are actually into this nice warm weather i can actually work outside um actually i probably could have um a few weeks ago however like the bugs were like just insane like so other than that uh <laughs> that cra crazy little uh spider that was actually crawling on my face it's uh it's all good now but sunlight being in sun is like something that is actually extremely helpful in terms of being able to manage some of our anxiety and so um vitamin d actually helps to um to boost our mental health right so it actually keeps us from um getting into a depressed state it actually helps us with being able to feel uplifted and energized and um and so when we live further from the equator and we don't have a whole lot of sun then that's something that we need to be able to do is try and find ways of being able to get into the sunlight and i know that um 
we have a couple of local doctors that actually have one of those sun lamps that you can actually go into their clinic and book time to be able to just sit in front of the sun lamp. And so um, just because it really does help to boost that energy, it really does help to be able to boost that um, um, our um, <laughs> lost my train of thought um just be able to help boost our whole thought process and being able to like just kind of uplift and feel energized and so um another one that is actually really good is being able to have a nice warm bath and so every day or at least 99% of the time I have a bath every single day and I started that for when my kids were little and so that was one of my stress reliefs is that just being able to like before my kids were born, I would actually soak in the tub and read a book and like my water would get cold and I'd add hot water. And then I had kids and then it was like, I just kind of stopped. And because it was like, I didn't have time. I was working mom. And so um, that's great. Thanks for coming back though, Rach. And so just being able to have that really, nice warm bath and mine is like really hot so like I come out like literally looking like a lobster I don't recommend that necessarily but um but whatever it is that you can in terms of being able to have a nice warm bath is that it just relaxes all of your muscles so like it doesn't just relax um it doesn't it's not just it's so for me it's really soothing to the skin but the warm bath actually helps to increase regulating our body temperature right so like when we actually and like i said i have a really hot bath so like that doesn't help to regulate my body temperature but it does make me feel really comfortable and that kind of thing so so what i'm talking about right now rach is um just trying to like what are some of the things that you do to be able to try and manage some of your anxiety um one of the things that I'm very, very extremely, extremely fortunate for is that um, I don't drink coffee. So um, being able to reduce your caffeine intake is something else that actually helps you to reduce your anxiety. Not necessarily at first as you're actually transitioning through not having that, um, that part of things uh, and not having that caffeine or reducing that caffeine. But if you can actually reduce the amount of caffeine that you actually have taken in, then it actually does reduce that anxiety because caffeine really does stimulate you. And so when you are struggling with anxiety, increasing your caffeine is not going to help you. It is actually going to make things um, even that much more challenging. So um, exercise is another one of those things. And so... That's one of the things that I chall I'm challenged with in the wintertime because I don't get out in the summertime. At least I actually get out and go for a walk and um, be able to, I go for hikes and things like that. So we are actually having like really, really warm weather. So during the day, not so much um, going for hikes and stuff, but um, but for those of you who are in the US, um, our uh, uh, 27 degrees Celsius that we're actually having, I think was uh, translated into like 78 degrees Celsius or so, or Fahrenheit or something like that. So apparently that's not very warm when you guys are, uh, it's actually kind of cool where, um, when you guys are actually down South, but for those of us out North, <laughs> it's actually, it's actually quite warm. So, um, it's quite warm. It feels good. Um, gives us some sun or some tan, tan lines, but it's, um, but being able to be physically active and um, having some weekly exercises. So one of the things that, um, and it, it could be any kind of activity, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're going for a walk or that you're going for a bike ride or that you're going for a jog, like whatever it is that actually works for you. And so um, it can be as simple as do, doing some moving meditation or dancing to some music or anything that just kind of gets your body moving. Um, doing leg raises while you're actually watching TV, right? So just anything that actually just gets you into some sort of physical activity to be able to help increase your heart rate a little. And so, and there's a lot of other benefits in terms of being physically active. The other thing is um, 
watching your diet, right? So like, and, um, and not necessarily to have a diet or go on a diet, but being able to change some of the ways that you're eating or some of the things that you're eating. So my go to when I'm stressed, or when I'm anxious is just grabbing something that's like quick and easy. So like a bag of chips or something that I don't have to cook or something that just kind of satisfies that that part of things. And so that is, um, but one of the things to be able to help with reducing anxiety is um, increasing your B your B12 vitamins. So finding foods that are actually rich in B12 or um, having a multivitamin that actually has B12, that kind of thing will actually help that as well. So um, some of the other um, things that are actually really good is... Um, essential oils or something and not necessarily like essential oils definitely for me but um but like even just the flowers right so even just some of the things around that actually helps to be able to stimulate some of those senses and so lavender is one of those go-to's for most people right so um i know that even when my kids were little one of my um one of my kids really struggled with um so that is um, um, one of the things that are actually going on and that kind of thing is um, is being able to do that. So um, lavender is um, it's relaxing and it's calming and it is, um, I don't know, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just relaxing. And But for some people, Lavender is the worst scent in the world. So find something that is actually stim stimulant or that is relaxing. So I had somebody, I had a client one time who used peppermint, right? So peppermint was one of the things that actually helped them relax and help them go to sleep. Lavender or peppermint is a stimulating scent for me. So it's like, didn't help me go to, it didn't help me go to sleep. It didn't help me relax. But for them, that was something that was actually very stimulating for them. So finding different ways of being able to do that, going for a massage, having somebody use essential oils during the massage, um, going for reflexology treatment. Um, so like, there's a lot of different things that you can actually be doing Reiki. And so I have a, um, Although I offer Reiki, I have a friend that actually um, does Reiki, but also uses a drum. And so just extremely, extremely relaxing. Um, and so I really enjoy. And mm, I think for probably I've been doing that for um, I think I've been quite, trying to go like roughly like once a month or once every six weeks or whatever. Whenever it is that she's uh, posting an opening, I'm usually jumping on the chance of being able to go in. And so it's just, it's relaxing. And so just being able to find those different things that are relaxing, that are soothing, um, that actually help you, <clears throat> that actually help you relax. And so, um, so I actually talked about vitamins, but one of the other um, fatty acids is omega-3. A lot of processed foods um, take away that that omega three, so it's just really, really important for you to be able to increase that omega three. Um, <clears throat> another one is um, teas, right? So teas have a lot of natural, and again, it's the, that flor, uh, that um, flower thing. So, like, same as the essential oils, kind of like what is it that actually helps you? Um, what actually helps you relax? What is it that actually helps you um, calm? It took me a long time. I can actually drink it now, but I couldn't drink it before. So I couldn't drink um, chamomile tea, but I can now. Um, it just tasted very flowery to me. It was like, oh, it's like I'm like literally chewing on flowers. Um, but now I can actually drink chamomile tea and it really is relaxing, but finding different um teas that um, will actually help you to be able to there are lavender teas there are um, I know that one of the things that um, um, answer uh, that um, medicine men have actually uh, that a medicine men have actually suggested was cedar tea right so that is used a lot as um, as being able to have that uh, that cedar tea to be able to relax and um, and cleanse it's a lot of different it has a lot of different properties as well and a lot of times a lot of the different teas have those kinds of things so um, me talking with my hands <laughs> my French hands um, so yeah I, I'm always talking with my hands so um, so I try and keep them down 
as you can see from like when I'm raising my shoulders or whatever. And so, <laughs> but my, my hands are always talking. And so just being able to find those different things to be able to help you relax. And so I'd love to be able to hear what are some of the things that actually help you to reduce that anxiety? What are some of the things that you actually do to be able to, um, to calm down and to do different things? Um, yoga is another one of those, um, is another one of those things that I actually um, use. <clears throat> not lately as often as I should. I really need to get back to a yoga class. So really looking forward to the retreat that's coming up in um, this month is that um, my friend Janine is actually going to be coming to the retreat and offering us yoga every day. So really looking forward to getting into those postures and being able to get that stretch and the relaxation. So I do moving meditation, um, which is still good and it still is very helpful. And so moving meditation for me is um, that I'm actually not sitting still. So it could be walking, it could be um, dancing, it could just be simply moving, it could be um, doing different stretches with different breaths without it being um, yoga positions. Um, and so there's a lot of different things in terms of relaxation and meditation um, that you can actually do. But one of the things that I talked about um, today is a, um, a technique called um, thought dumping or brain dumping. And it is probably the most effective in terms of like those insomnia nights, um, those times when you're actually waking up or trying to fall asleep with racing thoughts, right? So like you can do one of two things. Sometimes people will actually have no issues falling asleep, but then they actually have a huge struggle with being able to, um, with being able to, um, to stay asleep, right? So sometimes it's that struggle to be able to go to sleep. Sometimes it's that struggle of being able to stay asleep. And so just finding different things, um, using guided meditation, again, not for everybody, and certain ones work, certain ones don't, it all kind of depends on which ones it is that's very helpful to you. Um, reading <clears throat> is another um, strategy of being able to kind of shut down that brain, um, but just finding different ways. But if you're using brain dumping, so brain dumping is one of those techniques that you actually just use without, um, it's like really like not giving any thought. And so just kind of, um, you just take a journal or a page and just anything that comes to mind without turning it into a paragraph, without turning it into a sentence, if it happens to be a paragraph or a sentence, then like without paying attention to punctuation, no spelling, nothing, just writing. And so, um, one of the things that, um, when we were talking about that today is that we actually talked about how, um, being able to use the brain dumping becomes less and less and less, right? So when you first start it, it's like, you're writing like three pages, 10 pages. And like, it just seems to like, there's like no end insight in terms of the things that are actually going on. And then the next day, it's like a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. And it just keep, becomes and continues to be a little bit less as you actually go along. And so um, I have anybody who's actually given brain dumping a, um, a shot and has been actually using it is notices that there's a huge difference, right, in terms of being able to reduce that bedtime anxiety. It doesn't necessarily change anxiety entirely, but at least allows you to be able to get some rest. And so like if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and your mind is racing, then just pull out the pen and paper and write it out. Just get it right. And like, so whether it's one, it's a person that you're thinking about or it is a situation that's going on or whatever it is. And again, it doesn't have to be sentences or, and it shouldn't be sentences because you're not supposed to be giving it a whole lot of thought. It's about just being able to get it from your head to the paper that allows you to be able to say, I'm going to deal with this later and then go off to sleep so that you can actually get to sleep. Because what happens is that it actually tells your brain that it's done, right? So it's done. We've actually addressed it and we're going to finish dealing with it tomorrow. And then your brain kind of goes, oh, okay. So maybe I can actually deal with this tomorrow. So, um, but again, it takes some practice, right? So like all of these things, taking practice. One of the other things is, and this one he is huge, is just breathing right? So just being aware of your breath. So like when your mind starts to race or whatever it is that's going on, your brain can't do two things at once, 
It, it can't. It has no ability of being able to do two things at once. We can sometimes multitask and we can actually do some different things, uh, one thing or, or the other, but our brain can only do one thing. So if we actually take our active brain that is actually going into like this, this whirlwind of thoughts and being able to just take it and just go, okay, breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out and just focusing that attention on your breath. Um, my friend Chuck, who's actually going to be on um, next week on Monday Whispers, uh, Monday Whispers chat, is that he, one of the things that he talks about is being able to bring your awareness back to your heart center. And so like it all kind of depends on what it is, but it's like your brain cannot do two things at once. So if you actually be aware of it and thank your brain for saying, okay, I need you to know this thing. And it's like, thanks. And then bring it back to your breath or bring it back to your heart center, whatever it is that you actually need to be doing that way. So, um, so I'm hoping that those tips have been helpful and that if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any feedback, um, there are so many different things that you can actually be doing um, for um, dealing with anxiety. And again, there's no right way and there's no wrong way. And it's just being able to find ways that actually help you connect. What are some of the things that you can be doing? And um, the camera is probably, you're probably getting like really dizzy, I'm guessing, because like the wind is like picking up the uh, um, umbrella <laughs> and, uh, and moving it. So I'm guessing the table is likely moving too. So I apologize if you're like, whoa. So, um, but anyway, so like just if you have any questions or if you have any feedback and um, would love to be able to get some feedback as to what are some of the things that you guys do to be able to deal with your anxiety? What are some of the things that you do that sometimes work or that sometimes don't work, right? So, um, and being able to pick up some different strategies. So let me know. And hope you found this helpful. And I will see you guys for Monday Whispers Chat with Chuck next week. Really looking forward to, typically I interview women. And it's about empowering women. But we are going to have men on with us next week. So really looking forward to having Chuck. I really love Chuck. Um, his name is Chuck Forgette. And he is... Um, He's very incredible. So you've got me who is Miss Talk a lot and you've got him who's like very quiet and very reserved. And so um, <laughs> we're like two bouncing, um, two bouncing obstacles. But, um, but yeah, so really looking forward to having a chat with him next week. And um, so anybody who would like to be able to be interviewed or would like to be able to have a specific topic that you'd actually be able to, that you want to be able to chat about, then um, just let me know. I'll actually put it in the description because I forgot to put it in the description of being able to go onto the website and sign up. Um, and, but if you guys have a specific topic that you guys want to be able to talk about over the next few Mondays um, on days that we don't have people, then let me know. And I will, um, on, on different wellness things or different wellness techniques or different things like that, let me know. And I would love to be able to have um, some chats about it. So thank you for those of you who've actually been on and chatted with me. And I will talk to you all later. Have a great day. Bye for now.